God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to read Genesis chapter 49 from the Expository Study Bible, so the notes included. And as always, we ask God, in the mighty name of Jesus, to please bless us with the revelation of this word, so that we can grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and also that this word will be hid in our hearts. Oh, how we need the Lord. And the Lord is good. The Lord is so good. You know, all it takes is a single thought about how good the Lord has been to us. The Lord's been good to me. If you look at other people out there, you look at what's going on in this world, and you think about, through the grace of God, how you've been saved from it, from this madness, this abomination. God is good. All right, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. This chapter forms one of the greatest dispensational prophecies of the word of God. It concerns the latter days and the last days. This is the first occurrence of this expression, the last days. The prophecy may be thus divided. Reuben, Simeon, and Levi, the moral history of Israel upon the first advent. Judah, the apparition of the Messiah and his rejection. Zebulun and Isaac, I, you see the name. The dispersion and subjugation of the Jews among the Gentiles, Dan, the appearing in the kingdom of the Antichrist, Gad and Asher and Naphtali present the cry of the anguish of the elect sons of Israel for the second coming of Christ. Joseph and Benjamin together predict the second coming and glory of Israel's Messiah, Williams. Um, whenever it says Williams, that was uh, a note from um a man whose last name was Williams. So just so you know, gather yourselves together and hear you sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel, your father. In verse one and two, the Holy Spirit impresses the use of both names, Jacob and Israel, as the 12 sons gather in his presence. He is referred to as Jacob. However, when it, when it refers to the prophecies that will be given, he is referred by the principal name Israel. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. This is what Reuben should have been. Unstable as water, you shall not excel. No prophet, ruler, or great man sprang out of Reuben. Because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brothers, guilty of the same sin. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O oh, my soul, do not come into their secret. Secret plotting to murder the schemists. Unto their assembly, preparation for the slaughter. My honor with them do not be united. Jacob had no part in the slaughter of the Shechemites. For in their anger they killed a man, and in their self-will they dug down a well, a wall. And they're taking matters into their own hands instead of following the Lord. They greatly hinder the protective wall of the Lord around Jacob. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and slaughter them in Israel. The tribe of Simeon, when coming into the land of Israel several centuries into the future, would have no inheritance, but in fact would have their part in the inheritance of Judah. As well, Levi would have no inheritance at all, but would have their curse turned into a blessing as they become the priestly tribe of Israel, but yet scattered over the nation, fulfilling the prophecy. Judah, you are whom he whom your brethren shall praise. The name Judah means praise, and it is from this tribe that the Messiah would come. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. It speaks of the great victory that Christ would win over Satan and all the powers of darkness at the cross. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Israel will do this at the second coming. Judah is a lion's whelp, referred to, refers to a young lion 
in the power of its youth, absolutely invincible. This represented Christ in the flower of his manhood, full of the Holy Spirit, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, and doing great and mighty things with every demon spirit trembling at his feet. From the prey, the lion is always seeking the prey, never the prey seeking the lion. My son, Jesus is the son of God. You are gone up, meaning that Christ is always on the offense. He stepped, he stooped down, he couched as a lion, a rampant lion standing on his hind feet ready to pounce, which in fact was the emblem of the tribe of Judah. And as an old lion, referring to one ripening into his full strength and ferocity, who shall rouse him up? Who will be so foolish as to contest the absolute invincibility of Christ? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter is defined as a staff of office and, office and authority, which pertains to Christ, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. First, the fact that Judah was meant to be a guardian of the law, which they were. The temple was in Jerusalem, which was a part of the tribe of Judah, and which had to do with the law, until Shiloh come, when Jesus came, typified by the name Shiloh, who in fact was and is the true lawgiver. He fulfilled the law in totality by his life and his death, thereby satisfying all of its just demands. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. The only way to God the Father is through Christ the Son. The only way to Christ the Son is through the cross. The only way to the cross is through an abnega a abnegation of self. Binding his, binding his foe into, into, into the vine. The vine speaks of the fruit, and in fact, the blood of grapes, which speaks of what he did on the cross in the shedding of his life's blood in order to bring forth his fruit, this fruit. In his animal's coat unto the choice vine, he washes garments and wine in his clothes and the blood of grapes. All this speaks of, of the cross and of him washing his garments and wine in the blood. His eyes shall be red with wine, his eyes ever toward the cross, and his teeth white with milk. Speaks of the righteousness of Christ. It is righteousness which he has always had, but now is made possible to us due to what he did in his sufferings, the blood of grapes. Um, Zebul Ze uh, Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea and shall be for a haven of ships. This portrayal of Zebulun is not so much geographically as it is occupationally. The closest that this tribe came to the Mediterranean was about 10 miles. However, the great trade routes from the north to the south, etc., went through Zebulun, um, with them being very active in commerce, and his borders shall be unto Zidon. Uh, should have been translated, and his borders shall be towards Zidon. Uh, Ishakar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. And he saw, Ishakar saw, that rest was good in the land that it was pleasant, and he bowed, bowed his shoulder to, to bear. The tribe of Ishakar boarded the Jordan River, and as a result, favored some of the best agricultural areas in all of Israel, and became a servant unto the tribute. Has to do with our agriculture, uh, agricultural pursuits, and not subjugation by another nation. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way and an adder in the path that bites the horse heel so that his rider shall fall backward. Then had the ability to bear rule, yet became a treacherous serpent. It is certain um, observable that the first introduction of idolatry in Israel is ascribed to the tribe of Dan. And in the numbering of the tribes of uh, Revelation, the name Dan is omitted. As well, it is believed that the Antichrist, who will be Jewish, will spring from a tribe of Dan. Once again, likened to an ad adder in the path, most venomous serpent. So, you see the notes there. So, once again, I'll speak on that briefly. You'll see people make videos that Obama's the Antichrist or so-and-so is Antichrist. That's not true at all. People who say they have dreams of this, they're just demonic lies from hell. And the Antichrist will be Jewish, and it is more than reasonable to connect that he will come from the tribe of Dan because once again, Israel would never, ever accept anyone as their Messiah unless they were Jewish. 
That's common sense, let alone if you knew nothing of the Bible. That's just common sense, simple reality. So the Antichrist will be Jewish. And we know this for a fact. And he may come from the tribe of Dan, which is more than reasonable to assume. And also on top of all that, um, he may be a gay dude. So we shall see. All right. I have waited for your salvation, O Lord. Speaks of the second coming. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Gad will, will be overcome by the Antichrist during the Great Tribulation, but shall overcome at the last, which speaks of the second coming. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal uh, dainties. Asher could well be the first of the tribes to welcome Christ upon his second coming. The phrase, yield royal dainties, pertains to an excellent presentation for the king, that the king is the Lord, that that king is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Naphtali is a hind, a female deer. Let loose, he gives goodly words. Uh, Naphtali will have wonderful words for Christ upon his return. They will be words of repentance. Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over the wall. Joseph as Judah is a type of Christ, hence the flowing and glowing super superlatives Judah is portrayed as Christ in his sufferings, while Joseph is portrayed as Christ in his millennial blessings. The archers have sorely grieved him and, he, and shot at him and hated him. All speaks of what Israel did to Christ. But his bow abode in strength, and his arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. Christ did despite the opposition what he came to do, which refers to the cross. From thence is the shepherd the stone of Israel. Christ is referred to it's referred to here by two names, shepherd and stone of Israel, even by the God of your father who shall well help you. It is Christ alone who enjoys the blessings of the father and those blessings come upon him in every manner. And by the almighty who shall bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessing of the deep that lie under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. We must understand that God does not bless man per se, but rather he blesses Christ. If one is in Christ, then one is blessed. So that is something to say again. So we know that when God sees us, he looks to Christ to, to see us. We being in Christ, Christ being in us. And so it is understandable that we are blessed because Jesus is blessed. And because we are in him, he is in us. We are blessed too. So everything goes to Jesus. Everything. Nothing comes to us. There's nothing from God to us. Everything is from God to Jesus to us. It's all through Jesus. Everything is through Jesus. It's just that simple. The blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of my uh, pro, uh, progenitor generators, ancestors, unto the utmost bound of everlasting hills. As long as the hills last, the blessings of God will last. And as much as the hills are everlasting, this means that the blessings of God through Christ are everlasting as well. They shall be on the head of Joseph. The blessings will be upon Christ, of whom Joseph was a type, and of the crown of the head of him who was separate from his brethren. Even though Christ was a man, still he was separate from all other men, and because as well he was a son of God. Benjamin shall rave, uh, rave ravine, ravine. Something sees us pray as a wolf. The tribe of Benjamin may very well be the leading tribe to oppose the Antichrist. It is plain by this that, that this that Jacob was guided in what he said by the spirit of prophecy and not by natural affection. Else he would have spoken with more tenderness of beloved son, of his beloved son, Benjamin. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. Could well take place during the coming great tribulation as the tribe of Benjamin fully opposes the Antichrist. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is that the, that their father spoke unto them and, ble and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. 
Even though Reuben, Simeon, and Levi were under the marks of their father's displeasure, yet he is said to bless them, every one according to his blessing, for none of them were rejected as Esau. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephraim and Hittia. The heart of the patriarch was not set upon the wealth of his luxurious bedchamber, but was far away in God's chosen land. We as well must ever remember that while we are in the world, we must not be of the world. Our treasure is elsewhere. In the cave that is in the field of Mechapela, um, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephraim, the Hittite, for a possession of a burying place. The great patriarch never allowed all the splendor of Egypt in its ease to turn his faith from its correct object. It was ever in Christ and the cross. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And here they buried Leah. Um, his demand that he be buried where Abraham and Isaac were buried proclaimed within itself and made a statement that all these were staking a claim to the entirety of the land. God has promised it to them, and ultimately that promise would be realized. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was where was from, excuse me, from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of the commanding of his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded upon the ghost and was gathered unto his people. The last hours of the great patriarch were filled with prophecies and predictions concerning the 12 tribes of Israel, which would ultimately bring the Redeemer into the world. He died when that prophecy was uttered, but he did not die until it was uttered. It must be said of Jacob that he kept the faith that was once delivered unto Abraham and his father Isaac. He had not allowed that torch to fall to the ground or even be dimmed. At his death, it burned brightly, and in fact, brighter than ever. All right. So that was chapter 49 of the book of Genesis and Jacob. Jacob, before the Lord takes him, he gives him the prophecy to give to the 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. And people of Israel today can read this if they want to, and they can see what the future holds for their tribe. It's right here for them. So the Bible says it, so it's going to happen, period. Well, God bless you and God help us. We know we need Jesus and we need him desperately. We really do. So God bless you.